in 2019, I made a video called 10 Bands You Need to See Live 2019 Edition, and I thought that could be a fun video to make annually. Then 2020 happened. So much for that. Jokes aside, now that the world is slowly opening up with concerts and festivals coming, there is a massive number of tours coming to the United States and Canada for the second half of 2021. It's hard to even keep up with everything, so here are 10 bands you need to see live in 2021. Rules for the list. Number one, no repeats from the 2019 video. 10 totally different bands and artists. Number two, I'm only recommending bands that I have seen live before. Faith No More is doing a handful of appearances and even working some festivals this year that I want to see, but I've never seen Faith No More live, so I can't recommend them on this list. Number three, there's no ranking or order on this list. It's just a list of bands to see live. You'll figure out how this works as it goes on. Let's get to it. Starting off with a big one, Foo Fighters will be one of the first bands to return to the road promoting their latest album, Medicine at Midnight. Originally, Foo Fighters were going to be on a big road trip van style to commemorate 25 years as a band together before everything came to a crashing halt last year. Well, Grohl and the gang asked for a rain check and a new tour has risen from the ashes of a beat up old van. The tour starts this month after a one-off Madison Square Garden performance featuring an appearance with Dave Chappelle covering a Radiohead song. I know that sounds like Mad Libs, but it's all true. Foo Fighters have a handful of dates with more shows expected. In typical Foo Fighters fashion, they will have one opener, this time being Radkey, and then the Foos will play roughly two and a half hours of all their hits, deep cuts, and whatever shenanigans Dave Grohl wants to pull just because he wants to. My favorite Foo Fighters shenanigan that I've seen live was when they headlined Welcome to Rockville in 2018, and they brought out John Travolta on stage just to say hi. Then John left. That's it. No real reason for it. Travolta lives in Florida and wanted to swing up and say hi on stage to the Foo Fighters, I guess. And Foo Fighters just let him. One of the biggest tours I was really excited to see in 2020 was the Metal Tour of the Year featuring Megadeth, Lamb of God, and Trivium. I've seen Trivium live several times over the years and it never fails to impress me just how riled up Matt Hafey can get a crowd. It goes beyond just telling people to jump around, but he is a full pit commander and compels bodies to fly around with everyone screaming. Trivium will be playing songs from their latest album that came out last year, What the Dead Men Say. So while Matt has been killing it on Twitch and the band has all been working during quarantine with creativity, and making new music, this is a group that lives to perform. You get that after just one time seeing them live. The tour starts in the second half of August down in Texas and runs to October ending up north in Quebec, running all over the United States as well as including a festival performance at Blue Ridge Rock Fest. The metal tour of the year is definitely worth the ticket price for how much you are getting and to be honest, I think Trivium have potential to steal the show on a few of the performance dates. Also, it's fun to count how many times Matt will stick his tongue out at people while playing. That sounds like a joke, but I assure you, the number's a lot. Making a big comeback in 2021 with some massive touring plans over the next 12 months, Evanescence has returned and in the United States this fall, will be on a co-headline tour with Hailstorm that already has massive potential to be a big sellout at every venue the band covers. The reason I chose Evanescence is based on two things. One, the group's fifth album, The Bitter Truth, just came out a few months ago, featuring all brand new music, which many diehards have been waiting for for a long time, and now they get to hear those songs live. Number two, based off seeing Amy Lee and company live several times before, this is is a group that gives everything on stage and makes it a spectacle. The US Arena Tour starts early November in Portland, Oregon and will continue through mid-December before the holiday break. And then keep in mind, Evanescence will also be heading overseas in 2022 for the rescheduled Evanescence Within Temptation co-headline tour, which also sounds great. As once coined on one of my Twitch streams, Amy Lee is a goth hurricane while performing, spinning around, screaming her head off nonstop. Now the touring can resume and the band has music to share that's new, many fans will be happy who go to this tour, whether they want to hear the new stuff from Evanescence or they just want to shout wake me up inside with everyone else. After the Deftones tour for 2020 was postponed to 2021 and then again to 2022, Gojira are coming back to the States anyway for their own headlining tour to promote their latest album, Fortitude. After seeing Gojira live twice in 2019, I can testify that this band is a force to be reckoned with on stage. It's a combination of endless riffs and amazing drum work while Joe screams a deep, visceral, booming shot with every word, all in front of massive pyro that makes Gojira such a presence. I have seen so many people who aren't even crazy about Gojira talk about how good of a performance the band is live. Gojira's headline tour this fall starts with a festival performance at Louder Than Life in Louisville and then runs all the way to November with Knock Loose and Alien Weaponry as support. This is a heavy show, so regardless of the venue, expect a wild, sweaty, massive pit in every city visited. I will never forget when I saw Gojira live at Sonic Temple in 2019 and saw Christian set ablaze from an Eric Pyro blast on stage due to heavy wind. 
him finishing that song, getting water poured on him, and then Christian returning to keep playing the rest of the show. If that's not a testament to how crazy Gojira is, then I don't know what is. For a lesser known group that I hope gets more attention, Slothrust definitely put on a great show and adapt to whatever tour they are on with accompanying bands due to the group's wildly creative music writing that makes each song sound nothing like the next. What's more impressive is that it all translates well live. Slothrust is a group I've been talking about on New Music Night streams, and I feel the group led by Leah Wellbaum out of Boston deserves way more attention than the band receives. It's a three-piece group that has a big sound and makes many new fans through their live shows. Slothrust won me over as a fan after seeing them live for the first time at Aftershock Festival, and doing the deep dive was worth it. This group will be hitting the road opening for Manchester Orchestra and Foxing starting in Dallas, Texas in October, running through November. I get that not everyone can get to every concert early and see all the acts, but go early for the Million Mass of God tour to see Slothrust. I was really happy when I heard Slothrust was announced as support for Manchester Orchestra, who also just released a new album this year, and the band's upcoming album Parallel Timeline will be released before this tour starts which will also be great for them to promote the new music. This is a good tour with good new music being featured. The British are coming, and this time that phrase is meant as a good thing. Architect spent quite a while working on the follow-up album to Holy Hell, and earlier in 2021, the band released For Those That Wish To Exist, which is still getting good radio play, and their success will only be amplified once their headline tour takes off in the US this fall. Architects is a big band with many different pieces all working together at their live show. It's a lowly lit, loud, focused show with lots of emotion and anger and singing along to a band who does a great job at both getting a crowd moving and joining into the big parts. Architects North American Tour starts at the beginning of November in Los Angeles and goes through much of the United States and Canada as well as festival performances at Welcome to Rockville before ending in December in Minneapolis. December in Minnesota. Sure hope the Brits love lots of ice and snow. Architects not only sound amazing live, but they are one of the few metal bands that can actually put you in a trance while watching and listening. They have a hypnotic presence, and I'm willing to bet it'll be cathartic and rewarding to finally get out there and hear them play new stuff live that they spent a long time writing. For a band that relies on its live show and incorporates so much of a theatrical presentation for each song, in this moment, after a pandemic, definitely is worth seeking out. Just for the novelty of a unique concert that in this moment provides is worth checking out if you want something different. Maria Brink and company not only released their latest album last year, but I'm pretty sure Maria spent a lot of time in quarantine figuring out new stage designs, outfits, dances, and much more just for their live upcoming shows. I just envision Maria shouting, I've been waiting all year for this, before showing up in the most elaborate demonic stage outfit ever. The in-between tour starts in September in Lincoln, Nebraska and runs all the way through November ending in Atlanta. This is a huge tour with over 30 stops, so there's a good chance in the US that it's coming near you. For those who are not aware, In This Moment offer a stage show. Along with the dancers on stage, Maria changes outfit after every song. It's down to a science for In This Moment and they've only gotten better and more extravagant over time. If you want a different style of concert, see In This Moment. Punk Punk Rock is returning in 2021. After Rise Against released Nowhere Generation this year, the group is returning to the road on a headline tour, and I definitely think their show would make a great return back to concert life for many people who have not seen live music in over a year. Rise Against is inspiring live, with getting many messages across as well as delivering years of hits. For a band over 20 years in, they are still showing what punk rock should be about in many ways, and can outperform many other punk bands that are 20 years younger. Some talent does not age, and Rise Against proves that. The Nowhere Generation Generation tour featuring Descendants and the Men Zingers start at the end of July in Cleveland, Ohio, and goes through the U.S. ending in Sacramento at Aftershock Festival. Then, after a month break, Rise Against will head over to the U.K. for a few shows. Rise Against, like many other bands, are ready to live on the road again. Tim McGrath has probably had that hard itch to give his viewpoint on everything after a year like 2020, and after the new album Nowhere Generation surprised me, I'm hopeful to see Rise Against turn things up this summer and watch as that entire band just loses it on stage. Also, I want to hear Savior live again. It's not a politically charged song, but it's just really good. Some bands need to be on your bucket list for different reasons, and Judas Priest should be on there if you've never seen them live before, because let's face it, we don't know how much longer this ride will last. Rob Halford is still bringing out his motorcycle and planning on dominating live crowds in 2021. However, at 69 years old, his presence still dominates. When legendary bands announce they're going on tour after decades, it's worth checking out if you've never seen them before, because you never know when a group like Judas Priest will call it a day. So yeah, get your 
tickets. The 50 Heavy Metal Gears Tour will start in early September in Reading, Pennsylvania, including several festival performances and wrap-up in Canada in November with Sabaton as support. I have only heard amazing things about Sabaton Live, by the way, so this whole show should be worth seeing, not just Judas Priest. Also, wow, 50 years. Even this late into Judas Priest's career, I assure you that hearing Painkiller Live is still worth going out of your way to experience. And I also assure you, if you are a metal fan, you definitely will never want to say the phrase in the future, I never got to see Judas Priest. And this is Judas Priest with Sabaton. Go get tickets. Now that movie soundtracks are out of the way temporarily and album producing for others will be finished soon, Nine Inch Nails will be returning to the road with the promise of new music being made. If you have not seen Nine Inch Nails live before, they need to be near the top of your bucket list just for the experience alone. In fall of 2021 in the US, Trent Atticus and as many other musicians as they want will be hitting the road with Pixies for a few dates as well as headlining several big DWP festivals in Kentucky and Florida. On top of that, more dates are expected to be announced while while Trent and Atticus work on new Nine Inch Nails music. That's a big deal. Decades in and Nine Inch Nails Live still offers both unbridled chaos on stage in the heaviest of moments, while also offering the most serene, in-sync music you can find. All this coming from the minds that have now won every type of Hollywood award imaginable for creating music in every medium. As far as bands I've seen live before, Nine Inch Nails might be my most anticipated to see again. I want to hear all the hits and see the chaos on stage and in the crowd, but I also want to hear what surprises a new pieces they created. Considering also that they will be headlining specific days of two massive rock festivals in the US this fall, yeah, that's worth getting excited about. Know of another band worth seeing in 2021? Leave a comment and let everyone know. Big thanks to my patrons and a special thanks to Brandon Barenfeld, Chris Doman, and Dom Noble. You can have a say in upcoming videos and see videos early by supporting Rocked on Patreon. Please click the link in the video description for more info. Please subscribe and ring the bell to get notified on upcoming videos, and you can keep up to date with Rocked on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. It's going to be really weird as a concert photographer going back to my first show. I'm totally going to be in the photo pit, hoping my camera settings are still good, and really hoping I didn't forget everything in the heat of the moment, because concert photography can get chaotic at times. And you only have about 10 minutes per band, so yeah, hope I don't blow it.